Today we're going to build this modern plywood chair that assembles in just a few minutes. So a couple years ago, I designed this solid wood chair, which is pretty modern for a client, and this is the prototype that I built. I just wanted to make sure that everything was comfortable, I had all the angles right, things like that, and that it just looks good, which fortunately it is comfortable, and I think it does look good. One of these days, I'll do an actual full build video on this chair, so if it does exist, I'll link it below. If it doesn't, then just be patient with me, because I will I'll, I'll do it eventually. So I'll start off by saying there's a couple different ways you can create the components for this chair. What we're gonna do is design and build this on the CNC, which I have files available for. Um, so you can obviously cut everything out on the CNC, which is the easiest and fastest method, or you can use templates to be able to route and cut all these components through each individual one, which sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, CNC, if you've got it, that's the way to go, or just find a friend with the CNC because that's nice to do too. Before you actually start building and designing everything, it's really important to think about the quality of the plywood that you're using. So in this specific chair, I did not use very good quality plywood because I didn't really know what I was doing. And I used really cheap stuff where you can see there's not a lot of layers in here. It's light, it's fragile, and I already broke one of these slats and this one kind of broke too. This was just the first one I did, the prototype. So I definitely recommend getting a higher quality plywood like one of these right here. So as a reference right here, this is that cheaper quality ply, less layers. Um, this is Russian birch, which may be difficult for you to access. If you can get it though, it's obviously the best quality. Super great, flat, nice layers. And then this is a Vietnamese import ply that we've been using here in our shop. Super good stuff, and it's really cheap. That's what we're gonna be using today. I've become a big fan of it, so yeah. CNC that I'll be using, I've got a Shop Saber IS408 uh, with a big vacuum bed. Um, then I've got the All-Star Gasket Kit on here, which works great for holding small parts. And we will be cutting everything out with a 3 8 inch compression bit. All right, I'm going to walk you through um, everything you gotta do once you actually download the file, how to run it. So we're gonna go ahead and open vCarve, which is the software of choice on my end. Obviously there's a bunch of other ones out there. Um, this is just what I'm most familiar with and what we use in our shop. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new file. Um, on my end, we are running four by eight sheet of plywood, uh, 0.7 inches thick, which is pretty much standard 18 millimeter plywood, um, converted to inches, that works best, uh, material surface for my Z position, and then X, Y in my bottom left corner. Um, whatever you're most familiar with and how you run your machine, you can make these changes as necessary. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and import the file. On my end, I currently have this named Ericsson Plywood Chair V2 DXF. Um, there's going to be some other files available, so this should download in a zip file and you'll be able to open it and get a couple different variations like an SVG, DXF, and it, the ma name may be slightly variated um, depending on if for some reason I changed it between now and then. So go ahead and download this. All right, um, everything should pop up. I'll give you a little run through about what we're actually looking at here. So we have two sets right here um, that I will show you. This bottom set is uh, referred to as all of our pieces have fillets in them. And if you don't know what a fillet is, it is this little um, spot right here where this corner essentially gets cut out so that you don't have to go back in and chisel out all these corners so all your pieces can be flush and set um, or recess in there because all of this is interlocking components. And um, otherwise, if you had this, it would go straight down and it would cut straight across. And then this internal corner, you would have a little bit of a radius that you'd have to come back in and cut out. This just removes the need. Um, and typically for most people cutting plywood, if you're on a larger machine, uh, you're probably going to be using a 3 8 inch compression bit. That's very, very common for cutting plywood. Um, so that's just what I have everything set for here. But if for some reason you do not have that or you have a smaller machine and you need to run a different size bit, you would not want to do this specific piece with anything larger than a 3 8 inch diameter bit. You would not want to do a half inch bit um, with these fillets on the inside. There's not enough, essentially not enough meat in there once you add the fillet to be able to run it that way. So I would do a 3 8 inch bit or half inch bit, something like that. If you are running it that way and you want to add in those fillets, there's the little fillet tool right here. And then you will input the radius. So half the size of your bit if you're doing it in theory, a 0.25 diameter bit. You'll do half of that, so 0.125. And uh, we'll use the dog bone fillet here. And all you do is you just go through and click each of these little spots, and you have to manually add all of these in. So it does take a little bit. Do it on each corner where you have an internal corner. And then this one piece at the top here, I'm kind of hovering over. I didn't duplicate it a bunch of times, although you'll need a number of these. I think you need 15. Double check the one on the bottom. What you'll want to do is you'll want to create your fillet here and then duplicate the piece afterwards, run it and add them that way. So, or just copy and paste it as many times as you need to. Um, the reason I didn't do it, otherwise you'd create all the pieces if I had them there, and then you'd have to click, you know, add the fillets in a whole, a whole bunch more times. So we'll go ahead and skip that part for you. Also, these pieces that are off to the side, these are if you have a little bit more plywood to work with and you want to skip a step in the assembly process. I have this created for people who are running small CNCs as well, that you have at least, I think it's 34 inches long. Um, something along those lines for these components. 
And the way that I have this designed is that all these can interlock without having to do one big large side piece. And you'll see that in the assembly process here in a minute. But if you do want to skip part of the step where you create these side frames, um, you can just use this, this one right here and this one and not worry about a few of these side pieces here. So, but for the sake of the video, for what we're doing today, we're just going to be working with these components. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create my tool path for these uh, because I'm running that 3 8 inch compression bit and we'll switch over and I'm just going to do a profile tool path. I've already got a lot of this stuff input, but you'll put your material thickness, um, which for this project, I recommend 0.7 inch or 18 millimeters, somewhere right around there. You can adjust these as needed. And then with the 3 8 inch bit, uh, 3 8 compression bit, we're just going to do a single pass. Depending on your machine, we'll determine if you can do this or not, or if you need to do a smaller bit, you may want to do a couple passes. We're going to run everything on the outside. And also, if you are doing smaller bits or a machine that can't handle as much and you need to do multiple passes, I would recommend a separate last pass to do a little bit of a cleanup. Um, and for this, you'd probably just want to do separate last paths with like 0.05 inch, something like that, just to clean up those edges as it cuts down. And we are going to add tool paths. I do have a vacuum bed on my CNC, um, but for these smaller pieces, sometimes they do have a tendency to break loose. So we're just going to go ahead and add a few of these in here. We will do two per. That's typically good enough to hold. Depending on your situation or your machine, you'll know your tolerances and what you need to do if you've been running the CNC for a while. So you may need more than two. I will allow you to figure that out up to your own discretion. Also on these side pieces for all these little small ones, I usually add in one extra when I'm creating and cutting the tool path because sometimes there's an issue with one or it might get messed up. I believe that's what this one is up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. And then I will add a half inch ramp um, to this and just call this Ericsson plywood chair. I think I got everything in here. It should be looking good. So I'll calculate and then preview. And yeah, nothing's overlapping. There's enough enough of a space on the side to hold all the pieces in place. You may need to add a little bit more space in between each of these, depending on your setup. So we should be good to go from there. On my end, as I save things, you just jump in here. You'll input your machine settings, save your tool path to a hard drive or to your computer, and then run it directly off there. So yeah, hope that helps. And we are going to transfer this. My machine has a thumb drive that I have to put in a separate control module. So I'm gonna save it to that, and then we will start cutting. We got all the parts cut out. Obviously, if you have dust collection, that's great, which we do. I just didn't want to have it in the video so you can actually see what was going on. Um, we didn't cut 100% through on some of this material because I was a little worried about it releasing, at least on these tiny parts. So we'll get everything mostly broken out, rough cut, and then I'll clean up the edges and then it'll be ready for assembly. I got this little tool from the sign shop next door that they use. It has this little blade on it that swivels around. And for really, really thin veneers and plywoods, it can be helpful just to clean up some of those edges. Or if you don't have that little tool, just use a router with a flush trim bit and clean up your edges. All right, so now that I've got all the parts cut and cleaned up and ready, we are going to start assembling the actual chair itself. So pretty much the only thing you'll need for this is a little bit of glue and a stapler or a brad nailer. Um, I would actually typically use brad nails for this, but I honestly just don't have any that are short enough. So we're just gonna use some inch and a quarter staples. All right, so we're going to assemble the side frames on these first. We'll start by putting everything together on the table and then we'll put our staples through the inside to the outside so you don't see them from the outside face. We'll just use a little bit of glue in here as well. All right, so we're gonna get the components and lay everything out right here and attach that. I'm gonna get a mallet that's a little tight. That's good. Now we're gonna get a little bit of glue and just run a small amount around the inside of this frame here. And then we're gonna lay this one on top and staple it in place. I forgot, I need to flip this over. So the staples are on the inside and then we will staple it in place. Now 
And next we're going to grab the internal stretcher. This has to go a specific way, so you may have to like flip it around a few times until you get the placement right. And just add that little bit of glue. Stick it on there and then flip it over and add your staples. All right, and then this one's a little trickier just because this piece can kind of fall off. So just be conscious when you're flipping it over, but get your little glue bead, get a little bit on here, put the leg in place, and then we'll flip and do the same thing. Now that I think about it, you can actually just attach these two pieces together from the inside, and then we'll flip it over and attach just in this one small spot. You can see right here is where we have to add that staple in. So this is how you assemble the side frame. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we'll put the slots in place. As you do this, make sure that you put your slot side on the right section, obviously because if you do them like this, it only works a certain way and those wouldn't line up. So just ensure that those are on the inside and you have your orientation right or else you'll be very upset with yourself. Now we've got our side panels constructed. All that's left to do is attach these little slots. The one that you're definitely going to need some glue on is this one that goes up top, of course, otherwise it could just fly off, but yeah. So there you have it. We've finished our modern plywood chair. This one could use a little bit of sanding, and depending on your weight or whoever's using it, you may want to use some glue and different things in all these little slots here, or add some extra staples for just some added stability. So other than that, like I said, pretty easy project. If you're interested in it, like I said, I've got the file that you can get down below, just a couple bucks. I'd appreciate it if you want to go ahead and purchase that and build this piece. Thanks for following along. See you in the next one.